All right, so everybody knows in business, we always have to be ready for anything. You never know when you're gonna need to get ready and be prepared. All right, welcome back to uh, Comic Shop Talk. Uh, we're pretty much on schedule. I think we're around episode 44, 43, 44, something like that. As you can see, uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed the little goofy intro. <laughs> Uh, we like having fun, so, you know, the show is going to be on being prepared and what to be prepared for. Uh, some of the things, not everything, because if I knew everything, then I would be prepared for everything. Uh, we're probably going to go over some things that I wasn't prepared for. Most uh, notably is uh, everybody show, saw my show on death and taxes. If not, you should go back and check that out. Be prepared to keep very good records, especially financial records. That way you're prepared to pivot from a bad CPA, a bad accountant, to a new and hopefully improved CPA and accountant because you have all your records, keep all those copies. Another uh, small one, but simple one, is uh, do you have enough bags and boards in your shop? If you take a big collection in, you may have to bag and board a thousand, two thousand books. So keep your supply up, not only for yourself, but to, so that you can sell to the general public. As if you go back and watch the show on margins, there's good margins on supplies. So if you make sure you keep them in stock, people will want them. Also, I wasn't keeping in stock Silver Age and Golden Age, and then I got a bunch of Silver Age and Golden Age comics in. I had no bags and boards for them, so I had to wait to get them from the company. It took about a week, so I really couldn't sell them. I mean, there was a couple of, I have a couple of my guys. Everybody who owns a comic shop knows your guys who are willing to dig through. They have their own supplies at home. They know you take care of them when you're selling them books and they take care of you by not complaining that everything's not bagged and boarded. But uh, yeah, so you should keep enough stock as at least for the store. Uh, and like I said, if you watch the margin show, for the margins. Now recently, if uh, you don't follow me over on Haven for Heroes uh, YouTube channel, we had a really good response to a video that I did where I'm a lot less positive. <laughs> it got a really big reaction and people started contacting me and where can I buy your books? So there again, I wasn't prepared with a website. I had had my books up on TCG Player and when they closed, I wasn't prepared to move to another website. I'm missing out on all those sales that I could be having from the success of the the new success of the YouTube channel so now I'm looking crazily I'm digging all over the place to get a good place to buy comic book to sell comic books through an episode about being prepared be prepared the store is open somebody comes in we had to move the shot we were talking about uh, where to, to do sales online so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all my comics up on Overstreet Access. That is uh, what I think I'm going to do. You can't sell through the website, but people can at least see all your comics and then be able to contact you, pay whatever way you want to take payment. I, I will take payment on PayPal, but I don't use Venmo or a lot of the other services. I have a, my own credit card account. So we can put it right through that. That's where I'm going to pivot to. If you haven't seen, I'm going to do an episode either on this channel or uh, on my channel about the expansion of Overstreet uh, Access. And now that they've added scanning, you should check that out. The app is got some really great features. And now with scanning, it's way faster than having to type in. And the scan is pretty spot on. And not only that is that if you send in a bug, like it brought back the wrong book, you, you can say, yeah, this is not the right book. They'll automatically email you uh, and contact you about what book you were looking, what book is in the picture, and they'll look at it. They're doing bug fixes like all the time, and they're not really bug fixes. I mean, that technology of scanning something and coming back with is fantastic. But I digress. I, I really wasn't prepared you know, I've been doing YouTube videos for eight years and to like get that kind of response uh, on one video and then people contacting me that they want to buy uh, books from me. 
uh, really humbling and fantastic, but I wasn't prepared and I should have been. Something that you need to be prepared for that is a fantastic thing is huge success. You don't know till you open your store what kind of response you're gonna get from the public. You can do surveys and you can watch the traffic around an area where your shop is gonna be, but you're not gonna know how they respond to you. You're a big part of the business uh, as the owner. Uh, you build the community, people like you and trust you. They're more willing to spend their money with you. And you know, in collectibles, it can be a lot of money. So imbuing that trust and that, that community and your business blows up, you're gonna have to have connections on how to uh, restock and all the rest of the things and you know how to employ. And that was one thing that I failed on is that when I was ready for employees, I didn't know how to do W-2s and you know all that, getting insurance for them and what the state required and OSHA rules and you know, all those things that are tied up in it. So be prepared, even if you're not gonna have employees in the beginning, if you take off, you're gonna need them. So make sure that you're prepared to know what to do when you do need an employee or stock or anything if your store blows up. And that's the, you know, that's a good problem to have. When I first opened up, I never had a safe, kind of a very trusting guy. I have a lot of integrity and I expect that from everybody I interact with. Now I have a safe and we keep money in the safe and we do counts every day and stuff like that. So be pre prepared in protecting your investment. The other thing that I wasn't prepared for is when I was open for six months, we had a huge flood, which I lost all my comics. Uh, although I was slightly prepared because I, all my comics were on an app. I think it was long, I'm pretty sure it was long box, which now is comic book price guide. So it had all the prices of the books and everything. So. I didn't get, like we've talked about insurance uh, in collectibles, you get capped, but I was able to get uh, the cap, the total amount of all my books. That was a good thing. Uh, so at least I was prepared with having insurance and having my books all online. Uh, but I wasn't prepared to move my shop, uh, which then I did within two weeks. The great thing is, is about a comic shop, if you've built your community, I had 15 kids, probably 10 adults, hand carrying from one from my shop to my new shop. They've done all kinds of works for me for free. The community can be very, very fantastic. You know, they treat you the way you treat them. <laughs> of the stuff that you can't be prepared for is what other companies around you will do. I had garbage pickup and now I was made to get rid of my dumpster. My whole back parking lot, which I believe was on the deed that it was free use has now is all signage where if you park there for a long time, they're gonna boot your car at your expense. The outside of the shop, the parking is very limited downtown and where, where I'm at. And I've been lucky, the situation that this building is in up until now, and now it's shifting. And I knew the parking was always a problem, but it's something that's really outside uh, my ability to prepare for. So don't, Beat yourself up for the things you can't fix. Try to work with uh, the other businesses in your local town or city uh, in coming up with solutions. Don't always have to do it by yourself. Uh, try to bring in experts. And a lot of people, believe it or not, there's a lot of resources out there for free. You don't always have to pay for them. So think about that. And what I'm gonna end on is I think the most important point was keeping up with the industry. That's how you can best be prepared. When there's a shift in the industry, you have to be ready to move with it. A lot of people say, since I'm against grading, that I kind of swim in upstream against the industry, that everything is moving that way. I mean, after my video about it, most of the people, I would say 80% or more, were like me, and they don't like to grade their books. There are a lot of resellers and a lot of investors, that's what they have their investment in, is in the, I, I, I say they, they really are reckoned to NFTs. Once you've slabbed that book, it has a serial number on it. So it's a one of one book, unless you crack it back out and then it messes up the population. And we don't even know how many nine eights of certain books or nine twos that have been broken out. And some people send it back in. Again, I'm digressing. Like I said, is uh, keep track of what's going on with the, the industry. 
There was a big scramble when DC left Diamond. Everybody said, oh, the writing was on the wall. It happened pretty quickly. And uh, we did have to scramble a little bit. There really wasn't that much time where you're getting it from both places. Actually, it was for DC, there was no time. It was uh, sign up for this new distributor and put in your order and get your books. Marvel, uh, you can still get from Diamond, but they're originally that people thought that they weren't gonna be able to. So that was a big thing that I wasn't prepared for. I really didn't have the time for and how to make it the time for it. And then even on top of that, one of the things you can do is watch the channel. These are things that I wasn't prepared for. I'm just telling you my story and giving you some helpful hints on things that helped me out. And like I said, there's 40 some odd episodes, probably 35 of them deal with all different things that can come up when you're opening a business, not only a comic business, but a business, but specifically comics. So as we know in life, You can't always be prepared for everything. So, you know what I always say, keep reading comics and open a comic shop.